Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me again today. How to make an envelope journal, but not just envelopes. We're gonna properly make this into a journal with signature. I'm hoping I've got everything prepared. It's quite involved. Um, we'll cross our fingers and see how we go. You're gonna need for this one, four envelopes, different sizes, fine. So the envelopes I've got is just a normal, you know, sending off your envelope. I've got some junk mail, okay, which I have opened out. Now, a couple of weeks ago, a friend of mine, Kathy, um, you can follow her on Instagram, and it's uh, Crafty Chick Kathy on Instagram, but it's Crafty and then an underscore Chick Kathy. I'll pop it in the description. Did in our Facebook group, which is playing with paper and glue, um, did one of our weekly prompts and she used junk mail envelopes and she opened them out, turned them inside out to use the lovely colours that are on the other side, which was wonderful and I loved it. But since then, I've been playing around with open envelopes. So that's where this kind of came around. So we're going to need an envelope that you're going to carefully undo. Now, you can see I've been a little bit rough. So before I go any further, I'm just going to glue that little bit down. As they are all um, covered with paper, then it's not going to make too much difference because it'll get back into that sturdiness with the paper that I'm covering that side. So I'm just gonna adhere that bit back down so it's nice and solid. And we've got these. So that's your other envelope. Then we're going to need another. I've just used a loose, most of my envelopes, they're either junk journal, oh, sorry, junk journal, I'm doing junk journal, but junk mail envelopes, or envelopes that I've picked up from op shops and all sorts of places. So this is just a standard A4 document envelope. And then I'm lucky enough to have a pile of FPOS or point of sale old envelopes from businesses that we've had when machines were still, the FPOS machines were still the, you know, the swipey ones and all the rest. And I've got a pile of these ones. Any other envelope will be fine. I like these because they've given me two windows. One is an open one, but I've just used that. But any other envelope will be fine. And it's a little bit smaller. So first things first, we're going to actually adhere our envelopes together. Okay, so I want this one, which is my normal um, document one, and my standard little C6 type envelope. What I'm going to do with it though, is I'm going to trim off a lot of this bulk because it does add bulk to anything that we're doing. And I don't need that much there. So I really only need a little bit to be able to adhere it together. So I'm just gonna sit my little ruler on there, which is about, I don't know, half an inch wide, I suppose, and trim down there so that I've got that as my piece that I'm going to stick down. That's this one. And what we're going to do with this one, because I don't want, these are the self-adhesive ones. I don't want this little piece in here. So I could put it up there, put extra paper on that bit, but only have an opening like that. To make it a little bit easier to get things in and out, I'm actually going to take this flap off so that I've got a wider opening to get into. To get this flap off is nice and easy. I'll just put my ruler straight onto the fold line and I'll tear it off. Easy as that. Nice and easy so I don't tear under it. Also, I'll take a little bit of care with that one. All right, so that's that one. This one can be adhered on anywhere you like. You can have it down the bottom. You can have it in the middle. Generally, I tend to put them in the middle. It's just a me thing. I also adhere them with double-sided tape. So this is going to go into there. So we're just gonna pop a little bit of tape right close to the fold. If we can see the fold, there it is. And we're gonna trim that off, grab some scissors, like so. 
and then we're going to just peel this off and to save me getting my scissors all gunky I'll just fold that bit back okay just like so then you can't see any of it there and what we want move that out of the way move that out of the way move that out of the way is to sit this on so that it's on fold I find I usually sit like that so I'll sit it up so I can actually see unless I've inked in there I can't usually see where the fold is so I'll sit it up like that then I can sit this one on an angle in there so it's not actually touching the double-sided tape I can make sure that this will fold over and then I'll just sit them all down like that okay so I know it's going to fold flat Sometimes when you pop them on and you've popped them just over that fold, they won't fold over properly. Or if you've popped them too far out, you've then got where this comes up into a lip. So that's that. We've checked already that it's going to fit in there. This is my next flap. Now for my next flap, what I want to do is adhere it to this one. I don't need this one because I'm going to use this flap make sense what I'm going to do hmm, I could adhere that down there so this one will fit in here nicely I've made sure these two are the same size I don't need this bit at all you can either glue this bit down just to give it a bit more oomph I suppose you could always tuck it in Again, it'll give you a little bit more oomph and do the two of them that way. But then you're going to have to cover this. So I find the easiest thing is just to get rid of that bit. So we're just going to sit this down. And I'm just going to use my knife on this one. So I get a nice straight edge. And trim that off. Okay. So this one's now going to go in here. Okay, I also find, and I'm just doing this to put them all together. I've got one that I've done part way. What I usually tend to do is, now that I've trimmed this off, I will cover this side here so that I can put it up against this fold so I can get a piece of paper. Now, the paper I'm using is from a book. Um, a couple of weeks ago, went to an op shop. I know, how strange. And I picked up this book, which is Canberra is a Garden. So it's an Australian book. And I picked it up for 50 cents. Wow, bargain. But what it all is, is where I've used most of it now, now is hand-drawn floral, floral pictures and other air pictures from around the area. So it is a beautiful, beautiful book. So that's what I'm covering this with but I will find that if I'm doing these sorts of things let's have a look I'll grab one of these so let's say I wanted to use that page on this I would stick it on cut out my opening and then I can just well I'll cut out my opening for this first work out where it goes stick it on and then I can just trim straight down there makes it a little bit easier if you've got them covered prior to sticking them together but for today's exercise to try and keep this fairly quick we're just going to do them and then i'll show you a partly finished one that we'll then continue to work along so another little bit of double-sided tape and i'm sorry if you can hear that wind we've got the most massive windstorm today um, good for drying the clothes but it's whistling straight towards our front door which means it's coming around our front door so you can hear it like I don't know it's just horrendous coming through our front door today trim a little bit off that one just to straighten it up and then I can see and that's why I usually don't because then they're all over my scissors right open that one out give that a good push and I'm going to trim off the excess the other side of my double-sided tape just 
right down there. Oh, didn't put the lid back on that one, did I? All right, there we go. So, same as your last one, peel that off. We've all probably played with envelope journals before. Um, you can do just two to practice if you've never done one. They are such a wonderful thing to do. Fold that one back in, sit that one up, give myself that nice crease again. And we're gonna try and measure this one because this one is just the right size. So I need it to be right in there. And you're lucky you can't see me because I've got my tongue twisted. Have a look, beautiful. Right, there we go. So now we've got our three. This one has got this. Now with some, you'll have a nice flat edge. With this actual envelope that I'm using, it has this in it, like the smaller ones. So what I've done with this one, and we'll cover this one, is I'll grab a piece. So I'm going to cover one side, okay? And that will give me my straight edges. So let's say I want this one in here. Fold that over. And I'm looking like this. That needs to be at least out to there. So I'm gonna trim it round about there, which is giving me a little bit of extra on there. It's gonna come in to about there. I'll trim that one down. Now it doesn't fit in my little trimmer this size, so we're gonna use our blade. Might need to go down one. Right, go there, then I can see it. Nice and straight, up there to down there. Trim that straight down. So that's put this flower nice and close to the edge. Put that one over there. And what we can do now, bring this back over, fold it in, fold it in. And this can actually be adhered on to there. Don't worry about your writing because we can sit there and put our embellishments and all the rest on it later on. What I have done with all of them, as I've gone to stick them in where they're in corners, I've just run a little bit of ink up there, but that's again, just me. So that'll go in like so. What we're going to do is glue this entire piece. So a couple of extra ones. And then if I've got one of these, I can sit it directly where that fold is, okay? Because then I'm only going on the piece that I need gluing. So just your glue stick. Run that down the side where that fold is. Bring all of that, give yourself a bit more glue stick. Make sure you're right at your edges. Bring this one down. Bring that one down. So that you're not getting your work surface all gluey. She says as she goes off anyway. Let's see, what is it? Do as I say, not as I do. Right. So now we've got that. We're going to adhere this piece on. I want to go as low as possible down here. And I'm just going to go up that fold line. Because it's glue stick, I'm able to manoeuvre it. Again, make sure you can fold your envelope over. Just oh, while I'm doing this, I must say, I quite often get asked what this little doobie, doohickey, doobie, whatever it is, is and where I got it from. Right, what this actually is, apart from very dirty, 
is a pot scrubber, scarer, scraper, pot scraper. <laughs> um, got it for Christmas a couple of years ago from a friend. I've got a group of friends that we that I craft with once a month. It used to be twice a month. These days it's once a month. I don't have time. And we always give each other Christmas presents, but we always give the same Christmas presents. So there's, say, five of us. I'll buy five of the same thing, and we give them out, and vice versa. And in my present from Vicky, there was a few other things, and there was this thing, which was actually meant to be a pot scraper. And I looked at it and went, that's going to make an awesome glue smoosher and that it does it's nice and sturdy it's got a beveled edge both sides it's got a sharp point if i'm going right into things and it's got a rounded point for when i'm going around things it is brilliant i'm assuming it's from a kitchenware place not quite certain i keep forgetting to ask her um but it is brilliant and it's fairly large i can see it because it's purple and it just sits in my little container there and I can keep grabbing it. When I'm on the road, I actually have, um, I think Ranger put them out. And it's a little scraper like that as well with different ends and sides on it. But yeah, that's what that one is. And it's from a kitchenware shop. So now that I've put that on, I can turn this over and I can even this up. So I can trim it along here along here now you can do that with your scissors you can do it with a blade it's up to you which way you want to trim it now i'm going to take this one in there and trim that down so that it's just like so okay same with along there And then I can take it down here to match where I want it to go on the inside. And um, that's not very good trimming, is it, Kylie? It's all right. We'll fix that up at a later date. So when I turn this over, I can now see technically I could leave that whole thing in. Okay? And then when I cover, I will cover that entire piece. Does that make sense? Yep. So it's given you a flat surface now. Now, the other envelope I want to pop in is this one. Now, I'm going to adhere that one to that end because now I've got a flat surface to adhere this to. Okay, so he will go on and then I can cover this piece. Have I made sense so far? Go back. Do it slowly. Um, but yeah, so that will just go straight on there. Again, I would cover this prior to sticking it on because it's easier to work on one piece. Now, when you're covering them, I find it's also easier in here, in my little bits and pieces. There we go. All right. So there's that one. And I actually made a template of that one. Oh, that's one of the other ones. I actually made a template of that one. I'll hold them up to the light. And I will just use a piece of copy paper. Trace around it so that I can get the exact size. And then I'll measure my piece that's going on here to where that needs to go. I will sit my copy paper version on my piece of cardstock so let's say that was going on there I'd have this trimmed to size or just about definitely to that size and then I will measure across and I will measure up and work out where my template of that one needs to go so that I can sit it in I will trace around it and then I can sit it directly on okay just a slight hint because sometimes it's hard to do your window face ones if you don't have window face ones don't worry about it they can be a pain sometimes they look great don't get me wrong but they can be a pain so you know especially ones with the two windows it's easier just to cover them up 
all right so but for this purpose we're just going to stick this guy straight on like that so again i'm going to pop my tape down here this one again see how it's only a small opening okay so when that's on and it opens out i've only got a small opening to get it in there and i like a slightly larger one so let's all i'm going to do with this is it's already got a slight edge that's missing from there so i'm going to take this bit of glue and just slowly work it down sit my ruler on there okay so that i'm down about the same distance get my little ruler I'm about half an inch from the top there about half an inch from the top there fold that back on my ruler okay I've been I'm not going to cut this one off I'm just folding it down I will get my bone scorer I'll get another one because I can't find that one give that a good crease just slowly work it down so that you don't you know uh, quite often with paper if you're starting to fold it down like that it will wobble and you'll end up with little you know bumps in it there so just slowly work your way down all right and then what i do with that one is i'll actually glue that bit down it's easier than trying to tear that tiny little piece off or to get your blade in there or scissors or anything else it is only a little bit so i will just glue that down like so okay i'm just going to use my bone scorer to fold that bit down because it's only a narrow one like so okay so now it's given me a little bit more of an opening so now what we're going to do is adhere that one on and technically the basis of our journal is done keep putting lids on today i'm having a real go with that aren't i so our adhesion this time is going that way so i want my double-sided tape to go along there again right on that fold You can see it, which is why I tend to ink. Trim that off so that it's nice and straight. That one's right. Give it a good push, and then it should just come straight off. I do want a little bit of that taken off though. Should have done that prior to taking the backing off. So we'll just run our ruler down that side, leave a little bit more of a gap there. Like that. Okay. So now this one, keeping him flat, I'm gonna flick that all out that way. And this one's slightly smaller, only slightly. And I'm just gonna measure up to there and just slowly Pop it down, we know, because the fold's on the other side, I can do that. So I'm just bit by bit taking it down. There we go. So that now opens out that way and you will then cover that piece. Same with that piece, same with that piece. So what you've ended up with, four envelopes, one, your little one, two, longer one, one, open up and then another one so when they fold in this one which is the other side of this will fold back on itself that will fold back on itself this one will fold in and this one will fold in don't worry about those just yet because i'm going to show you what i'm going to do with those so that in its essence is your journal base right so now with magic of tv and all my hard work Bingo. Right, so it's covered. So here's my front cover, okay? With glue all over it already. We open it out. We've got our small envelope. 
Most of these are the same size as some of them are not. Lifting it out. So we're still going to do that because I want to show you a bit. We've got our cover down there. Here's our two window one. Okay. I'm going to cover that bit in a minute with that. This one is covered. And I've got glue on that one already as well. I'm doing well, aren't I? Fold that back over. Fold that out. Here's this one. And this one. Isn't this a beautiful book? It's just glorious. So my back cover, let's fold this back all in together. There's my journal. There's my back cover. Okay. So my window is there. But... I'm going to change it in a minute so you won't technically see that. What we're going to do, first of all, is I'm going to give you a hint. This one, how hard is it to cover these and then trim all in here? Here's a tip. So I'm just going to sit this this way. You should be in shot that way. Right, so here's my image that I want on that one. So I can glue it on and then try and get in there and cut it or I can sit there and try and pencil it all in get yourself a piece of vellum parchment paper tracing paper anything like that sit it over your envelope okay so that it's right where your envelope actually is up against there trace that bit then you can see where your pitch is going to come into and i can move this so that I've got that gap down in amongst my chimneys, okay? So what I'm going to do is trim this one out now. And again, if it's not quite right, that's why I'll ink. So you could straighten the whole thing up and just have that as a whole like we did with the other one that had the wonky end. But otherwise, this is how you can do this sort of thing. Okay, so we know I need to go right up the top and right up the top. So I'm gonna even that there. That's the size of my envelope. That's what I'm gonna see. Part, I'm gonna see this bottom bit as well. It's just that my piece wasn't quite long enough. So from that, I'm gonna sit that there and there now I can trace on the edge of my vellum. Like so. Yes, I'm gonna lose a chimney there, but there we go. So now we're gonna cut that out again. Just blade scissors, whatever you want to use, up and over, that's to make it exactly the same as the envelope, you could just do it straight or square, you could pop it on and pop a thumb hole in the top, it's up to you, so that should now fit in there like that, not hard was it, need a rubber, we'll rub out some of those pencil lines because my cutting is not awesome but what I'm going to do now is ink those edges just like so just so it matches in with the rest and that'll go on like so just like that how's that and then I can turn it over and trim around my other edges. So we're going to glue this one on now. And I'm going to glue this. Just pop a piece of scrap down there. And I'm going to actually pop that back in there so that I don't get glue on the inside. The whole thing will be just glued. Again, they're just odd size. Chapter 1 Australia, I don't know where that's come from. It's been an op shop 
bundle. I love buying bundles of envelopes in the op shops because you do, you find some wonderful sizes, especially when you're doing um, envelope journals and things like that and tucks and everything because there's just lots of different sizes look just fantastic in them. Well, I think so anyway. I think so. Right, so that's that gonna fold you back over there so that we can come up here now we're going to just place this in right up to the top because it's the glue stick it'll give me a little bit of time to maneuver I need to come up there a little bit like that that's around there that's around there right give that a push down Right, all nicely pushed down. That one's going back in there in a moment. And now we can just trim around this one. I'm gonna turn the whole thing over. I'm gonna use my scissors. I'm going to attempt to use my scissors. I do so much better with my blade. That's all right. We can do this. A lot of you all only have scissors. Not, not many people use a blade. If you're using a blade, well done. Um, but a lot of people just use trimmers or scissors. So I thought I'll try and do as much with the scissors just to prove that you can do all this with scissors as well. Um, I like these scissors. These are the Uniquely Creative Scissors. Um, and they're nice and sharp and they go right to my tip. And they sit nicely in my hands, so that's why you see, keep seeing me pull these ones out, even more so than my little um, cutter bee fussy cutting scissors, because I think these ones cut beautifully. Right, there's that one. Just got this side to go, and we'll go a bit cack handed and go down that way. What do you reckon? Try not to cut too much of your actual envelope off. If it's a bit wonky, don't worry too much. Give it a bit of glue. There we go. Bit of glue, not glue. What do I want? A bit of um, ink. So turn that back over. And now I can ink down here like so and it looks like the envelope came with it now I'm sure I've got no glued areas missing nope right that's that one like so this one on our other side we're going to do the same thing so you can see where I've glued this bit down need to make sure I'm up the right way and again, I want to go that side so that I can trim off on this end. It's easier than trimming off on this end. And that'll just go straight on like that. It's only a little bit larger. So again, I'm going to ink that space because it'll be easier to do it now before it's actually adhered in. And this whole piece I'm going to ink. Going, no, I'm not. What am I going to do? I'm going to glue it. Wow, Kylie, wrong side is what we're going to glue. All right, straight down. Oh, must be lunchtime, sorry. That was my stomach rumbling as well. The heater did come on if you heard another noise. That wasn't all just my stomach. Right. Is that one? up the right way, make sure I'm all up the right way. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go right from the bottom because there's more going on down here than there is at the top. Like so, so that if I've got it a little bit larger just to give me wiggle room and it means that I can trim off that top bit and it's not going to affect anything.
flick it over. Yes, I know, it's awfully long at the moment. Right. Missed a bit there. No, what I've missed is the actual envelope opening. So we'll just adhere all that back down. I've oh, picked all that up. All right. Check this side. We'll trim this side and then we'll um, check this one. So you can see where this bit's over a little bit. So we'll trim that. Because there was nothing on the paper at the top, it's not going to interfere with our design on the paper. And I've got a little bit up there, just a tiny fraction. Just a real tiny fraction. Don't cut your envelope. So it's such a pretty book. I'm so pleased I came across it. And yeah, 50 cents. Wow. Okay. So that's all done nicely in there now and we'll just ink all that and then I can check to see if I've got any other edges that need coming that need re-gluing or anything at this stage I think it's fine right so going back refolding you ready now done it again there that one there right so we're all open we close leave it open we fold back that way and in on itself so that it goes back that way and that's our front cover okay so what we're going to do now apart from make some room is that one covered that one covered that one covered, that one covered in here. What I want to do, a couple of things I want to do. I want to make, and I know that it's really pretty, and technically you could leave it as that, but I've got this wonderful flap here. Wonderful flap. Chopped off the bottom one, I decided that I would, and I'll show you what we're gonna do with these in a moment, but I decided I wanted the top flap and I'm going to make another pocket that will lift up but I'm not using an envelope. What I'm going to use is a piece of glassine that I've pulled out of an old photo album and I'm going to make a glassine bag because, we'll make the bag first and then I'll show you. So we want a bag, we're gonna go that way. I want a bag that's going to finish about down here, okay? It needs to, it'll go onto that bit up there and then fold up. To do our normal bag is a bit like that, like that. But our finished size that we want is just under what this is. So our envelope inside is mm, around about four and a half inches. Four and a half, four and three quarter inches. So I'm actually going to trim up a little bit there and there so that it's still got room to move so what we're going to do is just trim that section off and that section off okay and I'm going to take those right out I'm going to make them neater than they are at the moment but you get the gist Right, that one's a bit wonky, Kylie. That one's a bit atrocious, actually. And so I try with scissors, I do. I try with scissors. Let's go back to the blade. And I put a new blade in the other night. Right, that's got it. So that's my finished size. I'm far happier with that because it doesn't interfere with my folds. 
So my finished size is now, of course, it's not a real size. It's just whatever it is. Not quite four and a quarter. Yep, not quite four and a quarter. See, if I was thinking, I would have made it four and a quarter because that would have been so much easier. And it's a little bit long, a little bit wonky. So I'm going to trim just a little bit off it. I'm actually going to wait until I've put my double-sided tape there. So this one, we're just going to fold with our centre fold. You can do measurements if you want. This is me. I just want it to measure in. So this is round about the centre. I'm just going to come over a little bit. Make that nice and even at the top. Come down. This side. Going to go to there. That's where I want it to come to. Take it back up to the top. Push it down. Not hard so far, is it? You can see where they line up to. I'm going to take it a little bit past there so that I've got a glued area. Move that one out of the way. And I'm just going to put a slight pencil mark there, which is there. Same down here. And that's where I'm going to cut that. If I can see that, we're doing really, really well. There it is. And there it is. Right, so the other reason I like to use a glassine bag... <laughs> yeah, I couldn't say it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Now, I still need to do my bottom section. Okay. So, I want this to come past my window. It's going to sit up here. And it's going to come past my window. I've got a design that I want to use in it. Okay. So, because look, that's going to be adhered on the back of it. And then I've got that. Make sense what I'm doing now? So my piece of paper is only that long, which means that it is just past my window. So I'm going to the size of my paper. Everybody's envelopes are going to be different sizes anyway, so it's pointless to give you proper, proper measurements. So this will come out. I'm going to sit that on there. That on there. And I'm going to cut this piece and this piece. From that fold along and to that fold like so okay and did I cut any of it no I didn't too worried about ripping it that's my problem there you go always check before you move your ruler All right, now we're right. So this is where my fold line's going to be. Fold that up. You've seen me make glassine bags and little paper bags and all the rest before, and you've seen me do them with measurements. Now you'll see me do them without a measurement and just folded. This one's going to be creased. And I'm now going to trim that one a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer so that I've got that fold that will go up to my folds like so and then we're just going to trim that so what we've taken out is that bottom section like that so now I've got that I've got that one that's going to sit in there, that one that's going to sit in there, and that one that's going to go up there. You may need, so you can see that that's a little bit past that fold. 
So you may need just to trim and make it into a slight angle. Don't need too much off it. Take it back to that corner. So you can see I've just taken a slither off. Now it's just above the fold line, which is what we want. So checking this one as well. That one's just a little bit past as well. So we're going to do exactly the same thing, starting from there where it actually is and just take it into a little bit of a sliver off. Down there, down there and down there. Okay, now we can make this as pretty as we want, but what I want to do is cover this back piece where all this is. So I'm just going to glue here and here. Don't need to do too much because this is then going to be adhered over that. Okay. So let's have a look and see where we want this to go. So back to our envelopes again. This little bag, and I'm having my outside, my seamed bit in there, okay? So my window starts, I don't know, three eighths of an inch over, half a centimetre, something like that. And if I put this in here where that bag's going to be let's have a look and see what we've got that's a pretty good representation of that house so i'm happy with where that's all sitting and that's just going to go on there so when i flick it up i've got my house in there but my house is right there what i want to do is pop I want to leave the glassine bag on this side and before I, before I take it in, I'm going to put a thumb notch in there, okay? Because what you'll see is that, all right? Let's put it on the inside. How much am I going to see that house if I put that? I'm still going to see it, aren't I? Let's put it on the inside and we'll see more of that one. So you can change these things all the time. So this now needs to be about there. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, so I'm just going to Measure all this up first. That's on that one. That one. All right, we'll trim that straight off. Haven't looked at the time, sorry girls. Have not looked at the time. Let's just take that a smidge in. There's our house, beautiful. Beautiful, let's have a look, how are we going? 48 minutes. Oh, golly. I want that on the back side. So let's have a look and see if this is going to fit. Fits in there. That fits in there. That fits up there. Lovely, lovely. Yep. That fits that beautifully. Right, so we still need to do our little thumb hole. And I'm just gonna use a piece of scrap to sit that in there so that my punch will actually punch that. I might go that one. Might help if you straighten it. 
There we go. There we go. Beautiful. All right. Nope, it's going that way. Oh, can you hear that wind? My word. All right, so to glue this onto this, I'm going to put glue stick on there. It'll make it a little bit um, wrinkly to start with, but it'll flatten out as it dries. And in all honesty, I don't mind a little bit of wrinkly. So what I've got. that way. And I'm going to get rid of that one just so that I can see what it is I'm doing without another pattern behind me. So we're going to sit this down, line it up. Nice. Little bit of glue stick on that bit where I haven't got that there you go it's not even going to make it wrinkly and I thought it would make it a little bit wrinkly so just a little bit flatten all that out you can just use your fingers with that actually there that's the wrinkle I thought I was going to get where it's actually joined together so as in the the glassine to the glassine but that's not too bad and now I want that one up there like that so a little bit of glue on that piece as well straight up look at that that's what I wanted. So I've still got my little glassine pocket at the front. That's going to adhere on to that one, which will then go up there. And I'm going to put a piece of the white from this book page on that so that it all matches in. There we go, look at that. And that one will fit. Right. So turning that round, we're going to ink. No, we're not. We're going to glue that piece. Should give that a little bit more sturdiness as well. A little bit of that. Actually, hang on. I'm just gonna trim that little bit, so because it's where it was in the seam, and I don't want the thickness of that. Again, making sure that will fold over. All right, trim that, and then we can adhere that. And I only need that width. All right, straight along there where my double sided tape was. Don't ever let me use 
my scissors again for everything. I'm hopeless with them. Just make a mash. Just make a mash. Right. That bit. That bit. And that bit. Right. Done. I've already got my double-sided tape on there. Peel that off. Adhere the top of this one to that. And it should technically be the same size. Because we checked. Right. So there's that. There's that. And on the back is that. One more thing to finish us off to make this an actual journal journal. So we've still not got that much thickness in there. We're almost done, 56 minutes. It's gonna go over an hour, sorry. All right. We want a signature. Now, the other thing I like to use when I'm doing things like this, I like to use, as I've said before, my packaging paper and all the rest, because it doesn't bring bulk and you can still write on it. The other thing I like to use is tissue paper, really thin packaging paper. Um, that's been other thin, thin, thin paper that I've coffee dyed. And I've only got the three, three sheets, four sheets. I've got four sheets in there. So that's given me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 journal pages. And that is going to be sewn into there so that when all this closes you still don't have a great deal of bulk but technically it is a journal on its own make sense right now i'm going to thread it i nearly used white couldn't i right and i'm going to do a double thread so one two three and then double it it off just like so now because it's the one signature i can put it all in at the one time so we'll get the needle out we'll get an awl out and we'll get a mat i need to get myself one of those little doovy things all right so these have all just been measured to four and a half by eight and a half or nine by eight and a half in inches and then folded in half. There's my, and I like the crinkle in them. Isn't that cool? Cool, 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 cool. So I'm going to open that one out as well because we're going to go in there. Okay, so we're going to need to get a couple of little clips. I might even do you. Let's have a look. Now, the other thing is I'm putting it on this side because remember when we put our envelopes together, there we go, and we put our initial envelopes together, goes that way, goes that way, we've actually got an extra bit going through here. Okay, so whereas this one was just this very light envelope in half. This one was a bit sturdier envelope. So just have a look at the envelopes that you're using. In hindsight, before I'd started attaching all my pretty papers to this, because it grew in my head as I went, um, I would have popped another piece of copy paper in there on the fold or some washi tape, something a little bit more sturdy that would allow this to actually have some bulk underneath it. It's just not going to work. So I'm just going to do those. Get a really tiny clip, Kylie. It's not going to be too much weight. Yeah. All right. Is it in? There we go. 
Right, that one underneath, I don't have to worry about where my holes are going to be because it's just one signature, so I don't have to do them up each time. So I'm going to go somewhere in the centre for my first one, about there. Uh, and somewhere in the centre, which will be about there. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is leave that one in there because they're too hard to try and clip in. So what I'm going to do is use, I've got two awls, yeah, I know. Um, I'm going to, while they're nicely, this one's holding everything in place. I'm going to pop another hole just there. All right, and one down here. Like so. That way it's been held into place with that one and I don't have to worry about them moving. So we want a needle that'll take two of those and not be too wide that it's going to want to ruin our little envelope journal. Go in, go in, go in. Thank you. All right. So now I'm going to go through this one while I've still got it in, the, in that. Okay. I know, long way around for a shortcut, but I find it works for me. Up to this one. All the way down to the bottom one, and then I can start working them out. Straighten them up. Straighten them up, Kylie. Go one, two, three, and four, and into the bottom one of that. Like so. And then back out through our centre. Without going onto that one. See, I'm not a lefty. Don't ask me why I'm trying to sew that with my left hand. <laughs> because that was a bit stupid, wasn't it? Now I want that one to come through that way. That one's on that side. That one can go on that side. And there we go. Right. This one probably could have done with a five hole pamphlet stitch, but you know, it's done and dusted. It's in, we've got a little bit of twang, a little bit more will be nicer. All right, tie that. Now you can put charms on these. That one might be nice with a charm. I'm gonna leave both of them off at the moment. We're going to take those off. And let's have a look. So what I want is that, is that, is that, look at that. So this will stand up because the envelopes are nice and sturdy. They've got book paper on them, book pages on them as well. Yes, it needs a little bit of embellishing, but that's not going to happen on camera because we've been quite a while and it'll take forever to upload. Right, so just a quick review. Ready for everything to go in. Same with that one, same with that one. We now have a signature in here. We've got a little glassine bag in here onto our window envelope which you will see on the back. Hope you've enjoyed that one. Hope it hasn't been too difficult. 
um it's such an awesome idea and thank you kathy for opening out your envelopes <laughs> so thank you all guys thank you for following along with me if you like this video please give me a like i would love you to give me a like comment please i do try and get back to every comment and if you haven't subscribed i would love you to subscribe and i love 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 all my subscribers that i've got so far so thank you all very much Goodbye.